Now, as we get back to our, what's happening, Ken? As we go back to our ringside position, let's join my colleague, Frank Gifford, who's here tonight. Celebrities always in attendance at a heavyweight championship fight, and he'll have some interesting people to talk to. Take it away, Giffer. Thank you, Coach, and a familiar sight, you battling your way into the ring. Of course, the big one coming up just a little later on, Jimmy Young, Muhammad Ali, and there are a lot of people in the audience tonight that we really can't talk to because of the equal time uh, rule involved, but we do have some great friends here. Of course, I'm with one of the great legal names in this country, Edward Bennett Williams, and of course, he's also the president of the Washington Redskins, and along with George Allen, they brought some great professional football to this city, and now Muhammad Ali, Ed, has really turned this town on. He really has. It's great to see our town which is really the capital of the world, also show itself as the sports capital of the world because everybody is here tonight, the place is filled, and the exhilaration and excitement of a world heavyweight championship fight permeates the whole town. I think, uh, I, tell, I have three of my sons here tonight, Frank, and I said that they've seen a lot of things. They've seen a Super Bowl game, and they've seen a lot of sports, and they all play sports, but I tell them the greatest thrill in all sports is when the lights go down, the bell rings for a heavyweight championship fight of the world. I don't think there's anything uh, quite like it, Ed. And uh, you've had a chance, I know, to uh, know Muhammad Ali. You have, have known a lot of people uh, in your career. Uh, you maybe dig into the psyche, if you will, a little bit in your work. Uh, how about this man? Well, I think he's fantastic. He's, uh, he may be one of the greatest champions of all time. Uh, he has blinding speed. And he has uh, really total dedication that's concealed under a facade of uh, kind of easy living. But uh, he is really probably uh, the greatest world's heavyweight champion we've ever had. Uh, all talent, all kinds of talent. Maybe, Ed, uh, one of the greatest athletes, if not the greatest we've ever known. Maybe the greatest athlete. Maybe the greatest athlete, Frank. He'd make a fine tight end, wouldn't he? Well, I, you know, I think he's almost old enough for our team. <laughs> Ed, thank you for joining us. We'll be talking to other people shortly right now. Let's rejoin the coach, Howard Cosell. Thank you very much, Giffer, and thank you, Edward Bennett. He's not old enough for your team. Ollie against Young coming up. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, as you can see, I'm back in harness at ringside, the Capitol Center, Landover, Maryland, shortly coming up. Fight for the heavyweight championship of the world, Muhammad Ali against I think very, very much underrated Jimmy Young. The kid's not a bad boxer. He has a fair enough jab, a pretty good left hook, and a reasonably swift right. He is a counter puncher, and he is the third rated contender in the country. Certainly not the 15 to 1 underdog that the ringside odds portrayed him to be and the odds that you've read about in the press. In fact, Angelo Dundee, the longtime trainer and buddy of Muhammad Ali, and you're looking at him right now, live in Ali's dressing room. Angelo Dundee is one of the shrewdest guys in boxing. And he is worried about a relapse such as happened in San Diego in 73. I talked with him today. Angie, I've, as you know, been with Muhammad and you throughout your respective careers together. And I've watched him closely the past couple of days. Somehow, I almost get the smell of March 31, 1973. He appears out of shape, boisterous, too much so, and I'm wondering if this could be a replica of the first bout against Norton, this young affair. Bite your tongue, Howard. This should not happen again. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. He's not in the kind of a shape like we were in San Diego, I assure you, uh, because I had a sign out in the hallway saying, Remember San Diego, and we remember San Diego. I assure it's not like that. He's in good shape, five pounds over what he was when he fought Joe Frazier. He can carry that weight. He's a big fella. Well, if you're not really worried about this whole situation, why did you put up those signs, remember San Diego? Why would you feel it necessary? Well, because they were partying them around. They were bringing them all over town. They were putting them on a million TV shows. I just wanted them to remember to cut it out, and he cut it down the last ten days and really hit the ball. I'm really startled by the what I think is true confidence of this kid, Young, who is not of the stripe of Jean-Pierre Koopman or of Richard Dunn, whom Young himself knocked out. I wonder how good a fighter this kid is. Characterize him. Well, he's a Philadelphia fighter. He's a good boxer. He's a game kid. He's been doing a lot of good things in the gymnasium I've been watching, so we're going to be ready for them. 
I look for a tough fight. I don't think Muhammad's going to get to this guy early. I think Muhammad will stop him in the latter rounds. Now, you say he's been doing some good things in the gym. Like what? Well, what he's been doing, he's been sort of throwing patty cake shots at Muhammad in, uh, towards the middle, working with big, strong guys, uh, then loading up with a good shot. He's also been grabbing the rope with his right hand, hitting with his left hand. Grabbing the rope with his left hand, hitting with the right hand. He's doing some good stuff in there, but I don't know if he's going to be able to get around Muhammad, because like you say, he's 230 and it's kind of big. Mm -hmm. well, can we expect any foot movement from Muhammad in this fight, or will he stand flat-footed? Well, I think he's going to try to rope the dope, I think. But I don't know if this kid's going to be doped around like that. I think this kid's going to be moving, boxing good. Uh, I think you'll see Muhammad counter the guy over his left jab because he's got an awkward kind of a left jab. Muhammad's left hooks will be in evidence tonight because this kid turns into left hooks. So you're going to see a lot of movement. You're going to see a lot of action in this fight. It's going to be a good fight. Now, for the benefit of the uninitiated viewers, when you say this kid turns into the left hooks, amplify, what do you mean? Well, what he does, he stands sideways. In other words, his body is susceptible to the left hook from this side. And this is what's going to happen. Muhammad's going to see he could be hit with that punch, and he's going to use that punch. Good. Enjoy talking with you. I'm going to enjoy the fight better. Ali in his dressing room live, just watching that talk with Angie, who's taping him. The Ali Young fight coming up shortly. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> All right, you're looking at Angie Dundee taping Muhammad Ali in his dressing room. We opened our program tonight with footage of some of the greatest heavyweights who have ever lived. Muhammad Ali self-proclaimedly is that, and some of us happen to agree with his estimate of himself. Others, old-timers, are more likely to scoff at his claiming that position, although Edward Bennett Williams, in his talk with Frank Gifford, said he thinks Ali is probably the greatest heavyweight of all time. Let's, as we wait for the Ali Young fight to start, go back in time. Let's take a look at Jack Johnson in action, and then my talk with Muhammad Ali about it. Camp, it took Jack Johnson seven years and 66 victories even to get a shot at the heavyweight crown. This was that shot. December 26, 1908, play Sydney, Australia. And look at what Johnson is doing to little Tommy Burns. Johnson at six, one and a half, much too big, much too strong against the five foot seven inch opponent. And right there was when the police stopped the filming of the fight, champ, the 14th round. They themselves stopped the fight, believe it or not. They didn't want the public to see a black man knock out a white man. So Jack Johnson became the heavyweight champion of the world. He was also a man with deep personal troubles and involvements. That's his first white wife right there. His first defense of the crown against this man. 158-pound middleweight champion Stanley Ketchell, known as the Michigan Assassin. An outlaw type who traveled with the Dalton gang and Cole Younger. The likes of people like that. But look at that right by the little man. Knocking down Jack Johnson, champ. Johnson got up. I don't think he could believe that himself. But instantly he responded. All over Ketchell. Knocked him out. Remain the heavyweight champion of the world. That fight promoted by Tex Rickard. Gambler turned promoter. Rickard had other ideas, as you see him there, because the whole theme then, champ, was the great white hope. So the man in the middle became the great white hope in a presumed great comeback try. Jim Jeffries, who hadn't fought for six years, the idea to bring him back from Jack London, the famed writer, together with Tex Rickard. Rickard built this arena, champ, in Reno, Nevada, especially for the great comeback try. But it was no try at all. Jeffries had to lose 80 pounds to get into presumed shape for Johnson. But Johnson was all over him from the opening bell. Gave him a steady pummeling until finally, in the 15th round, champ, as you see it here, the end started. Johnson knocking down Jeffries for the first time in that round. And then notice Johnson, champ, didn't have to go to a neutral corner. They didn't have that rule then. He just hovered over Jeffries, quickly at him, all over him, knocking him through the ropes. To show you the passion against the black champion at the time, champ, watch this. Spectators hurry over to help Jeffries back onto his feet and into the ring. But to no avail, the pounding continued, and finally, the knockout. Jack Johnson, still the heavyweight champion of the world, and the Jeffries comeback try, not even really a big one. But 
tr personal troubles continued to haunt Johnson Champ. Here he is coming out of a courthouse, convicted under the Mann Act. His first white wife had committed suicide two months earlier, and still they convicted him under a statute enacted just to nab him. But what Johnson did was flee the country. He skipped bail, went first to London, then to Paris, seen there with a second white wife. A couple of title defenses, routine things in Paris form. Then up came this man, champ, the Potawatomi giant Jess Willett. Six feet seven, 250 pounds, a title defense arranged for in Havana, the Oriental Park racetrack, April 5th, 1915. One of the most controversial endings in history. It went into the 26th round. The famed Sheriff Fat Masterson right there, the timekeeper. This 26th round action champ, and watch closely. Did you see that right? Down went Johnson. Notice the hands over the eyes, the hot canvas, 102 degree heat. Johnson later claimed he threw the fight, said he could be seen shading his eyes from the sun. The truth is, people in the States didn't see these films until 40 years later. Let's look at the blow again in slow motion. The only thing that was seen before then was a still photo in which Johnson was apparently shading the eyes. But you just saw that right, champ, and indeed, it looked good enough to have knocked out Jack Johnson, who always claimed he threw the fight. Thus the saga of Jack Johnson both boxing in person, the Stormy Petra. Okay, Jack Johnson, we're back live at Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, waiting for the Ali Young heavyweight fight. I'll be back in a moment to talk with Ali about Johnson. All right, we're back live at Capitol Center, Landover, Maryland. You've just seen the story of Jack Johnson and I talked with Muhammad Ali, who was with me when we did that story, get his views of Jack Johnson, because he's often been likened to him, and even did a show about him. No question, the man had a stormy life, and in many ways, a tragic life. Do you liken yourself to him in any way, in terms well, of the prejudice they say I'm kind of they say I'm controversial, they say that I'm, I'm bold, but I wasn't nothing like Jack Johnson. You must remember now, this is a black man. Think about how, how we were treated here. They had lynchings and rapings and burnings, and every time he'd fight, they lynched Negroes and burn houses. And that's the history. This man was told, if you beat this white man, we're going to shoot you from the audience. He said, well, just shoot my black so-and-so because I'm going to knock him out. And white women, although I don't agree with forced integration and... and and a lot of mixed marriages, but if a man believe it and love a woman, he can do what he wants. But here's a Negro, during the time you'd be lynched for looking at white ladies. He'd walk down the street and left the country with him. He was bold. He was, there was no black muzzles to defend him. There wasn't no black panthers, no Ralph Bunch, no Ralph Hewitt Newton, no Elgis Cleaver, no Marcus Garvey even. And he's walking around the streets of white women, beating up white men. He had to be a courageous man, so I just admire him for more so than his boxing ability. But in those days, there was no television, no, no airplanes, no press media, and they lynched Negroes and news didn't leave a certain state. He had the nerve to be beating up white men and darn them to get up and knowing they might kill him. I don't know what he had. Who mm -hmm. talked to him? Who was backing him? Okay, you've expressed yourself in that regard. I'm bold. He was crazy. Muhammad Ali in his dressing room, sounding off again, 34 years of age, 52 fights, 50 victories, 36 by knockout. The only losses, March 8th, 1971, fight number one against Joe Frazier. And then first fight, Ken Norton, March 31, 1973, split decision against him. The broken jaw, which at the time he called a message from God. He would never get out of shape again, he said. Talking away in there now. Muhammad Ali getting his whole troop, his whole retinue excited and enthusiastic. Maybe not excited. We'll be back in a moment. Well, we're looking at the door to Jimmy Young's dressing room. And Jimmy has shown nothing but confidence in preparing for this fight. Great vocal confidence, and it didn't seem to be a superficial thing. Yet tonight, he may be feeling a little bit edgy, and if he does, that's certainly understandable, going against a classic fighter. And we cannot go inside his dressing room. 
but I did talk with him earlier today and suggested to him that he did indeed seem to have a great deal of confidence. Here's what he said. I get my confidence from because he's only just another man, just like I am. You know, he has the same amount of hands, fingers, and eyes, and everything. And I believe if I cut him, he'll bleed just as well as I will. And uh, God gave me the same thing He gave him. You know, so I have ability, and I'm gonna use it. Are you aware of the fact that he is apparently not in very good condition? Witness's weight of 230. Yes, I'm aware uh, that he's uh, not in uh, his best condition at least as when he fought Joe Frazier anyway, you know. But uh, I'm not, I'm not going to let that go to my head or anything, you know. And when the bell rings tomorrow, I'll go and punch myself out because I figure he's not in condition. I still plan to go 15 rounds or less, you know. He's still dangerous. He's 34 years, 34 years old, the people say, and his legs is gone and this and that and the other. But he's a good 34 year, I say. And I'm a, a very good 27 year old. You have said that after the fifth round, you will have the fight in hand. Why do you say that? Well, I, no, I, was, I, I said after the eighth round, the people will be able to tell who's going to win the fight, whether it's him or I, and I predict a knockout, no split decision, a unanimous decision. He says he's going to let me work five rounds in the sixth round. That's going to end the fight. But, uh, I mean, you can, people can believe that if they want to, but I don't believe that, and uh, I just see otherwise. All right, there again you see the door to Jimmy Young's dressing room, and quite understandably, waiting to come out to fight Muhammad Ali, he didn't want us in. He's 27 years old, Philadelphia fighter, the record 17, 4, and 2, rated number 3. Muhammad Ali, a different kettle of fish. The veteran who's fought the greatest fighters of his time and has been the heavyweight champion for a long time. And I talked to him and told him of Young's confidence. He replied. All right, let's talk about Jimmy Young. This kid has a very real confidence about fighting you. Yes, he has. If he didn't, then it'll be a bad thing. I'm glad he's got it. He's cocky. He's talking. He's confident. And I hope that he does that until the round one. Till the round one. Till round one. Till it starts. Up until round one, I want to see him still cheerful and jumping and cocky because I'm going to retire this year. I have a heck of a schedule this year. I'm going to retire the champ of the world. And then I'm going on for Ken Norton. And after Norton, I can retire. Because while I say Norton, some fools still think Norton can beat me after I destroyed his daddy, which was Fullman. After I destroyed Joe Frazier, who will destroy Norton. He still thinks he can fight whoop me, and people do too. So I have something still to prove. And after I'm through with Norton, I can say goodbye to everybody out there. Will you knock Young out? I really don't know what round it will be, but I should knock him out because I will use my rope a dope. I'm saving my energy. I'm only going to take my time, lay in front of him, Howard, with that jab, with that jab, lay with that rope a dope, block him as I throw some, Howard. Throw some of them out to the head. Well, he'll go to throw the some, stomach. Throw some to the head. <laughs> now block them. That's all. And after four or five rounds, he shall run out of gas. And you know this is the energy crisis. You shouldn't run out of gas. It's too hard. Fuel is too expensive. He should cruise like I'm going to cruise at about 55. He'll be doing 100. And then when he run out, I'll... The irrepressible Muhammad Ali. There in his dressing room after saying that. Oh, yes, live, Muhammad. You run live. That's right. After this pause for station identification, we'll be back with more exclusive coverage of the Muhammad Ali Jimmy Young World Heavyweight Championship fight. Capital Sports Center, Landover, Maryland, in the heavyweight champion's dressing room. He is surrounded by the usual entourage. To the right of your screen is Brother Rockman. Directly behind him, the colorful and often irrepressible Drew Brown Bundini. Who, yes. I want to say one thing. Hello to Dick Gregory out there running from Los Angeles to Chicago. He's in Phoenix, Arizona now, so I want everybody to get by him and the starving people's food drive. All right. This is now a time where you should be showing some kind of mild tension. No matter how long you've been at it, you've often told me, always at the last minute before a fight, there well, is so that many, inner fear. I have so many things to take my attention today. The government of Turkey just came by. I'm going to Turkey in a few months. I want to announce the announcement of Istanbul, Turkey, and I'm so thrilled of the thing as I'm getting back here. Oh, wait a minute. I'm wait a all minute. about fighting. You're going to Istanbul? Yes, sir. In the a Norton of fight will be held there? 
No, I can't say it might be, but I will say that we just got an invitation from the government there, and I'll be in Istanbul, Turkey soon. But you also said you'll be fighting there in a few months. Working on Stone. it. We're working on it. We're working on it. It might be announced. But Is that the Norton fight? Might be the Norton fight. We're working on it now. Okay. How is your right hand now? Show it to us. The well, one that the right used hand's to be in damaged. Good shape. This hand used to hurt, but it's in good shape now. Top notch shape. I'm going to be hitting awful hard uh, tonight. I'm a little overweight, Howard. I want to tell the people why. As you know, I'm fighting again uh, next month, which is a little unusual to fight so regular. I don't want to burn myself out. Then I'm going to Tokyo, Japan the following month. And then I'm going on back around to Turkey to talk to the people there. So I have a big schedule this year, plus Ken Norton, too in about another few months so this okay. is why i don't want to work too i'm in shape but i'm a little heavy heavy but tell the people don't let them deceive them because i'm ready okay champ champ you know in your hometown louisville this is the biggest weekend of the year yeah we got a derby special taking place tonight a half hour after the fight program ends and then the kentucky derby tomorrow let's go to louisville chris Schenkel. We're back live, Capital Center, Landover, Maryland. Sorry about this, Phil. We're still waiting for Ali and Jimmy Young to come out of their respective dressing rooms for the heavyweight championship fight. But we told you, if time permitted, we were going to show you some of the greatest fighters who have ever lived. And that's why we showed you Jack Johnson. Now, that ever-remembered fight, the second Dempsey-Tunney fight in the long count. This was round one, the two of them in action, Muhammad. Tony in the white trunks, Dempsey in the dark. Take over, if you will. Well, Howard, I'm not a fighter now, so you best at that. I got to give it to you. But from what I see here, these fellows are both uh, bossing scientifically. And Dempsey they, too. Both Dempsey slugs it out sometimes. Some fights he is just slow. He's respecting this man too in the white trunks because he's a scientific boxer, and he's not so quick to run in with so many wild charges. And Dempsey fights different type fights like myself, like everybody. Sometimes he can just be a whirlwind, like a windmill. While then now he's taking his time and he's jabbing and he's using a little sense because he's fighting a man with sense. But both of them are scientific and Tooney is a good fighter. And they're doing a lot of charging. When they do charge, you notice they clinch up real quick. And they can't do too much from there because they're in too close. But they got to get back. First it's round like, action, they're really feeling one another out. Yes, how many rounds did this go? It went 10 rounds. Boy, you smart. Both of them are taking the times. And these old films, Howard, don't show pictures like films today. These old cameras and technicians were not as good as they are today, just as the fighters are not as good as I am today. Old All cameras, right. old fighters. We're approaching the end and, in fact, have the end of round one. This is the controversial round, round seven. They had agreed that a fighter, when knocked down, the fighter who committed the knockdown would have to go to a neutral corner. That agreed upon Dave Barry, the referee. And there you see the knockdown. The knockdown of Howard, Tony say, by Dempsey. That was the same thing happened when I fought uh, Sonny Liston the second time. Sir George Joe Walcott didn't hear the bell or he got confused. He was telling me to go to my corner at the same time. Liston was on the floor. Right, that's true. Walcott that count went about 24 seconds. But now let's watch it. Once again, and then we're going to see the clock run against Solid the punches. background. Solid yes. punches. Now, watch the clock. They bury the referee. Dempsey does not go to a neutral corner. The clock begins to roll. See it there, Muhammad? Actually, it right gets now. up to five. And now, as it approaches six, Barry first begins the count. Now you'll see another source of the controversy that has lingered to this day. Because the question was... As it approached 10, could Gene Tunney have gotten up? And to this day, it's an unanswerable, with varying opinions. You see Gene waiting there, according to the count. Going up. One of boxing's most famous stories, back live at the Capitol Center, Landover, Maryland. Quickly, let's go to my colleague, Frank Gifford. I'm told at the moment, Frank is not quite settled. Remember, we're awaiting the start of the Jimmy Young Muhammad Ali fight. His guest is not yet with him, but I'm going to take the liberty giver of turning it over to you anyway. Well, thank you, Howard. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, there are a lot of people here tonight that we can't talk to because of the elections coming up. But there is a young man, a great middleweight of a few years ago, who has been uh, quite celebrated over the past few months for other reasons that we will not get into this evening. But 
He is an old friend of yours, Howard. He's an old friend of mine, Reuben Hurricane Carter. And Reuben, let's, let's talk about Muhammad Ali because he's the story here tonight. Uh, Jimmy Young is a fighter, uh, but Muhammad Ali is something, uh, well, he's something really special. Muhammad Ali is a fantastic human being, but even more than that, Muhammad Ali is a correct thinking person, just as many other correct thinking persons, people in this country are finally realizing that only when people get together with other people will we solve the problems of people, and Muhammad Ali is that man. He's not only a fighter by profession, but he's a fighter by conviction. He knows right from wrong, and that's beautiful. Unusually in uh, many respects, uh, as a fighter, uh, Ruben, uh, you've seen the great ones. It's been your profession. Uh, how would you evaluate him? Of course, we're talking about 1976. So therefore, if we were living back in 1986 or 1886 or 1786, well, the fighters of that time were the fighters of that time. But we got to grow. We got to keep on moving because a fool, no, neither a wise man can see where they're going if they're always looking backwards at where they've been. You see, so Muhammad Ali is the greatest today, right now. And he has proved that. And I think that he has shown that he loved himself so much. And that's why everybody else loves him, too. He's the people's champ. Very well, thank you. You sounded a little bit like him. He said, uh, the jets outfly the propeller planes. He said, why am I not the greatest? Ruben, thank you for being with us. Thank Enjoy you, the Frank. fight. It was great to see you again. You. Ruben Hurricane Carter, one of the top middleweights, and, of course, a great friend of ours from a few years back. Over to you, Howard. Thank you, Giff. Muhammad Ali about to get into his robe, about to come out, giving us a last noble look, staring at us right in the face and at all of you, too. There's his record for you. Incidentally, I'd like to clarify something Frank said, or at least amplify rather than clarify. He said that we cannot talk to political figures. There are many of them here, such as Senator Teddy Kennedy. But under the equal time provisions, we cannot put on any politicos who are engaged in actual election campaigns at the present time. Thus the inability to talk to them. There's Jimmy Young, as you see him, emerging now from his dressing room and about to enter the arena. Note that he has only five knockouts. He is not a power puncher. Was knocked out, and that's his worst defeat on his record by Ernie Shavers in the first round. Yet, he did beat Ron Lyle. Unanimous decision in Honolulu a little more than a year ago. And he, of course, knocked out Richard Dunn in the eighth round, who was supposed to be Ali's next opponent come next month. Richard Dunn being the British and European heavyweight champion. It's Jimmy Young with a mild smile, but he's got to be at this time a little bit shaky. A 15 to one underdog, but with enough skill to be rated the third contender, number three, and with enough skill not to be taken, as of the same quality of the likes of Jean-Pierre Goukman. So Jimmy Young, now about to enter the ring, the crowd first becoming aware of his presence. There are some empty seats here. They had expected a sellout, but they do have, I would suspect, in the area of 13, 14,000 people. A pretty good crowd. There's Jimmy in the ring, not much crowd reaction. The fight coming up, and we'll be back at ringside in just a moment. We're back live at the Capitol Center. Muhammad Ali in his robe in his dressing room, and at long last, the champion is ready to come out to fight Jimmy Young. We've already told you about his record, about how long he's held the title. To me, the incredible thing about Muhammad Ali, the thing that makes him in my own mind, the greatest heavyweight who has ever lived is that he was enforcedly idled. You all remember it for three and a half years. The best three and a half years of his boxing life. Yet he came back, fought a classic fight against Frazier on March 8th of 71. Lost it, came back from that. Lost to Kenny Norton, came back from that and came back to knock out George Foreman in Zaire, recapture the crown, and then beat Frazier again in that marvelous battle in Manila. So this is a man, think of baseball players, a more sedentary sport. They lose a year, Kurt Flood couldn't make it back after staying out a year. Boxing, the most brutal, demanding of all sports. Muhammad Ali coming back after three and a half years. To me, that's the stripe of the man. That's why he is the superb champion. The tale of the tape, before you now on your screen speaks for itself. The age differential, the weight differential, because Ali should not be at 230 pounds, whatever the protestations to the contrary. 
and it remains to be seen against a young kid who's a pretty good boxer how long it will take him and if this gnawing at Angie Dundee deep inside about the memory of the fractured jaw at the hands of Kenny Norton it remains to be seen if there's any chance of a repetition of anything like that but an overwhelming favorite clearly Ali should be on grounds of skills experience everything in the world going for him. against a kid who while a decent boxer hasn't really been that tested and hasn't really grown that much now you begin see the attention being given to the champion now the crowd sees him now the Raws come up up goes the Ali right hand that's his brother Rachman wearing the Fez cap Angie Dundee always close in there somewhere without question Dundee is one of the smartest men I have ever known in boxing not just smart as a trainer he knows how to promote a fight. The fellow with the glasses in the Fez is Ali's personal bodyguard, Pat Patterson, member of the Chicago Police Force. Now you begin to hear the crowd. What a curious and complex man, Ahmed Ali. A chameleon, capable of being gregarious, and engaging at any level of the social stratum. He is directly above us now, getting into his corner. And yet, with an attention span of perhaps 20 seconds, capable of changing his mood in just an instant and suddenly appearing cruel and even sadistic, such as in his displays against Patterson and Terrell. Ali now in the ring. We finally get ready for action and we'll be back for the start of the fight in just one moment. Back at the Capitol the Center, the ring announcer Marvin Brooks is world. now addressing the crowd as we await the These start of the Ali the Young fight. of the Maryland State Athletic Commission, D. Chester O'Sullivan, chairman. We're looking down now Doctors from in ceiling Charles camera. Tomasella. Steve referee and in this Nobles. bout will be Tom Kelly and we will have a mic on him as we did during the Norton the stand up fight. Is Izzy Bach. Your ring announcer is Marv Brooks. The judges are Larry Barrett and Terry Moore. The referee is Tom Kelly. Fifteen rounds. The participants. The challenger from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania weighing 209 pounds, wearing black trunks, Jimmy Young. His opponent, the current heavyweight champion of the world, from Chicago, Illinois, weighing 230 pounds, Muhammad Ali. So the um, ring Cherry introduction. Hill, New Jersey, Ali. Scheduled for 15 rounds <laughs> for the heavyweight championship. Are you going to make announcements? All right, we should be getting the referee's instructions in a moment. Tom Kelly, the referee, Larry Barrett and Terry Moore, the judges, scoring on a five-point must system. Mandatory eight count in effect. Three knockdown rule in this fight, scheduled for 15 rounds because it's a championship fight, is weight. Three knockdowns of a fighter in a given round will not automatically end the fight. And there will be no saving by the bell, except, of course, if it should go 15 in the 15th round, the bell would automatically end the fight. So that's the situation here at the Capitol Center, where at long last, we are going to have Ali against Jimmy Young. To review the Norton Stander fight, it was stopped in the fifth round. Norton okay. did a most right. workmanlike right, and Jimmy, professional job Jimmy, Muhammad on Ali. a far inferior opponent. Here's Tom Kelly with the instructions. All right, Jimmy Young, Muhammad Ali, I want you to both protect yourself at all times. Watch your low blows and your roughness, and I want a good, clean fight all the way. 
Pay attention to my instructions at all times. Some of that grease off. Yes, sir. Like I glad to yeah, right. Jimmy, we're going to take a little of this off because yeah, we'll, off you'll help. Yeah, yeah. Here, got it. Yeah, oh. take some of it off. We'll be on it. <laughs> Dundee is always looking for an edge. Take some of that grease paint off. Okay, I'll get it out. It's the way he operates. Okay. I've Jim, already right told okay, you about fine. the people That's in right. Muhammad's so, yeah. Corner, the familiar grease. retinue. Louis Saria, the man who rubs him down, been with him for years. Drew Brown Bundini, his principal role is that of noisemaker and friend. Dundee, the trainer. Ferdy Pacheco, the doctor. In the champion's corner, in Jimmy Young's corner, his trainer, Bob Brown. Round one, the action begins. Ali in the white trunks, Young in the black. Swing by Ali. All right, let him go. Let him go. Punch out. Now. Here, Tom Kelly. Let him go. Let him go. He said. <laughs> Round one. Ali against Jimmy Young and a feeling out process. Ali just covering Young, trying to get the left in there. You heard Angie Dundee say he didn't think it would end till the latter rounds. <laughs> Ali raising up the arms, telling Young to hit him to the belly. And indeed, Ali doing no punching at all in this one. Young with those pretty fat jabs. He saw Ali lift the hands up and challenge him again. In at 20 and counting down in round one with little or no action. A quick right by Jimmy Young. A quick right got through to Ali. Not powerful, but it landed. It scored. In fact, Young got a left into Ali. Said he has a fair jab. There's no power. Let him go. To Come it. on, clean break. Hold it, Alan. Let's go. Let's go. Fifty seconds remaining in round one. Young gets that left jab in occasionally. Ali doing no fighting at all. Nothing whatsoever. Just keeping the gloves up in front of the face. Keep your gloves closed, keep your gloves closed. We've had a lot of experiences with this man. It took him till the 15th to do away with Chuck Wepner, remember? He slept walked with Wild for 10 rounds before ending it in the 11th. And that was a disputed end. Keep ending. up, Jimmy. Blow, blow by Jimmy Young. You heard Tommy Kelly say, keep up, Jimmy. Counting down to the end of round one, scant action, Young's round, Ali not fighting. Round two, Ali against Young, our ceiling shot as we open the round and then zoom down in on the fighters with an overhead shot. First round, one of those curious pieces of business that we've seen so often with Ali, no fighting at all, adopted that pose. Young got in a number of lefts and even a fairly good right. So he had to win the round on sheer effort. Let him go, let him go, let the arms, come on, man. Once again, the mic on the referee, Tom Kelly. His words will speak for themselves. That left of Young's is getting in there. As Ali is keeps up with this kind of tactic, Young's confidence will inevitably grow. Let him go, let him go. Come on, man. And you heard 
John Let Kelly. Let him go, Ali. Let him go. Let Young go, Ali. Frazier always claimed that Ali held him. Ali's goner is yelling to referee Tom Kelly to watch Young's low blows. Ali moved quickly after him then with two quick rights. All right, let him go. Hold it, Jimmy. All right, Ali, let's go, men. Clean break. Keep him up, Jim. Keep him up. Keep, those Keep him up, Jim. Still another low blow from Jimmy Young. Keep him up, Jimmy. Keep him up. Keep those blows up. You heard Kelly again. One got a left into the midriff, which has two rolls of fat where there used to be one. See that pity fat jab? Dundee talked to me about that in our interview earlier in the telecast. Now, Ali is just saying, go ahead, hit as we count down to the end of round two. Back for round three again with our ceiling right, shot again break, zooming break. down from overhead. Ali's corner asking him to start fighting. Herbert Muhammad, his manager, sitting near the corner, openly disturbed. He doesn't like this kind of thing. It was he who went over to Ali's corner in the Coupon affair in Puerto Rico and said put an end to it. Now it's not going to be that easy with Jimmy Young because the guy's a professional fighter. Good enough to be rated number three in Ring Magazine. We don't make the ratings. He's got quick hands. I'll say that for the kid. Ali beginning to throw a little bit of leather, at least try to, which is a change in pattern. Ali covering effectively and saying to Young, keep, keep hitting me, keep hitting me. He's talking incessantly to him, though we can't pick up the actual verbiage. Don't forget, a half hour after the fight telecast, a derby special from Louisville, Kentucky. And tomorrow, the great race itself. Certainly America's greatest horse race and quite possibly America's greatest sports spectacle, the Kentucky Derby. Look at that, a rope of dope. Now he's asking Young to come into it. I just looked at Angie up, Dundee, Jimmy. asked what's happening, held up his right hand, said, wait. Well, he'll wait. Kids got quick hands. They get in there. Keep up, keep up, Jimmy. Keep him up. Another Come on, punch out your Come on. Tom Kelly to Young to keep those blows up. Young looks so small by comparison with Ali, who's at 230. Come on, clean break. Come on, Jimmy. Young is big enough at 209. Believe me, a well-built kid. New Brown Bundini now yelling, keep sticking, champ, as Ali begins to use that left jab. Keep up, Jimmy. Keep up. But the countdown in round three. The bell for the start of round four, and Ali yet to do anything. Just a couple of left jabs in the third round. Young doesn't hit hard, but at least he's been throwing jabs, an occasional right, and the hands are pretty quick. Ali may pick it up in this round. We'll see. 
Let him go, let him go. There's Angelo watching the fight. All right, let him go, men. Come on, let him go, let him go. Come on, clean break. Watch it back there. Back. Come, on. Come on. Smart as he is, he doesn't map his fighter strategy. Cannot control them in that regard. He, he never be. felt that Ali should have used the rope a dope against George Foreman. Pleaded with him to get off the ropes. And yet it turned out Ali knew exactly what he was doing. Ali is at least throwing some leather in this round. Let him go, let him go. Come on, clean break. All right, hold it, hold it, Jimmy. Hold it, all right. Let's go. Yeah. All right, let him go. Come on, clean break. Come on, man, let's go. Clean break. Fourth round action, such as it is. Ali against Jimmy Young, the heavyweight championship of the world at stake. All right, hold it, break. Come on, hold it. So far, Young has done a pretty good job of defending as Ali has begun to throw some blows in this round. Let him go, Jim. Let him go. Come on, break. Clean break. Come on, let's go, man. Clean break. Come on, Jimmy. Right, I can't say he's done let's the go. thing. Punch him. Ali yeah, missing. Come on now. With a right out. and then a left. Forty-five seconds right, left in the round. Come on, clean break. Now. Let's go. Punch him. Observers at ringside gave Young the first two rounds. And the third round was generally considered right, go, to be Jim, even. All right, all right, all right, let's go. Come on, clean break. All right, let him go. Come on, clean break, man. Come on. Of course, Young believes the longer the fight goes, the better his chance. Let him go. Come on. Younger. Push out, man. Come on. All right, let him go. Come on, punch out. Let's go, man. Come on, clean break. Come on, Jim. Let's I go. must say, referee Kelly is active. Coming up the end of the round. Go, go your cards. Round five. Fifth round action beginning again. We begin with our overhood, sh overhead shot. The crowd was booing the fight at the end of the last round, and I don't blame them. Heavyweight championship fight. High price seats, they're in right, title. Let him go, break, step out, come on, clean break, man, come on. Young moving around the ring, away from Ali now, as Ali begins to move. Remember, this is a big ring, a 20-foot ring. It was the very ring used in Lewiston, Maine, when Ali disposed of Liston in the first round in that very controversial right, battle. Out. Come on, watch it, come on, man, keep it clean now, keep it clean up, watch it. Slippery guy, Young. There's Jack Ford, the president's son, who's at ringside looking on. He's smiling. All right, let him go. On the surface, on seems to be enjoying it. Let's go, Allie. Come on. One of the few, if he is. All right, let him go. Come on, let the neck go. Come on, man. Clean break. Come on, now. Don't let me push you. Come on. Clean break. Another one of the strange things about Ali. How he can be so brilliant. Against class competition. All right, hold it. Come on. Let's go, man. And, All right, come uh, on. Let's go. Clean break. Come not on. so brilliant. All right, Jimmy. Against lesser competition. Ali with that right, All right lead. Come on, man. Come on. Clean break. Come on. Come on. Come Through the years. Let him go, Jimmy. Hold it. Come on now. Punch out. Oh. All right. Let him go now. Come on. Punch out. Of course, you see the protective on, belt Jimmy, being worn by Young, emerging above the belts of the waistline right, of his trunk. Come on, come on, punch it. Come on, come on out. Clean break. Come on, man. Come on. Come on now. Let's go. Clean break. Tommy Kelly, the referee again. 45 seconds left in round five. 
<laughs> yeah, Jimmy came in with a pair of good shots to the middle. Jimmy got in a left to the face. Let him go. Come on, let him go now. Slippery kid. Moves around, gets down low, holds on. Ali hasn't been able to get through to him yet, although for two rounds he didn't try very hard. Ten seconds left in the fifth round. See that? Ali really tried there to jolt him. Let's go. Watch it, Ali. Come on now. Come on. Give it. Round six underway. Crowd not at all happy with the general dearth of action up to this point. All right, let him go. Come on, clean break. Come on, man, clean break. Let's go, watch the push. Oh, he is missing an awful lot. Come on, boys. Punch out. Whether it's his own absence of timing or Young's defensive skills, let him go. Come on, let him go. matter of conjecture. Don't forget tomorrow, the 102nd running of the Kentucky Derby, the run for the roses. Honest pleasure, bold forms, play the red, Kojak, on the slide. Possibly a triple crown winner. And either honest pleasure or bold forms. Sixth round action. Ali's gonna now asking Ali to go to work, go to work. He appears to be trying. I break it up now. Come on, clean breaks. Some point in time, if you balloon up and you're in your 30s, you can stumble. Against an opponent taken too light. Angelo Dundee again, watch it. I'll tell you whose face isn't happy, Herbert Muhammad. In the front row at ringside. That was a pretty good right by all. Young using the ropes. Ending over. Covering up. Ali having trouble getting through those defenses. Ali with a superior strength, expecting to wear Young down. Young downing on the passage of time for Ali to wear down on grounds of weight and age. Ali is pushing him around now and trying to maul him. Right by Ali, got in there. <laughs> pity Pat, pity Pat. That's the way Angie described it. All right, man, in the free fight interview. Come on, 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 Round about to end. Now go to your corner. Round seven underway. Bell just sounded. Between rounds, Ali go, right on, over us, bantering with out. the crowd, but the crowd exhorting him to do better. Last round, actually, Ali did do better. Most around ringside have the fight. At this point, basically even giving the last two let rounds to Ali. Keep up, Jim. These are all unofficial Come on, scores. Let him go. Come on, let him go, man. So far, we haven't seen one single right lead get through. Ali tried that. Jimmy Young responded. It was all right and left. Up in the gallery, they begin to get a little excited over that. See the way Young drops down low, bends over, covers up, that left gets into Ali. Then a right got in. I'm not telling you this young man is punching hard, but I'm telling you on the basis of what fighting we've seen, 
He has scored fairly well. Wait. Certainly Ali has it. <coughs> Ali missing again. Did you notice? With the right. Kid slips punch as well. Ali misses with the left. Sluggish. Off time. The opponent is quick. I call punch out. Let him go, come on, punch out, man, you're sweet. Well, I've used up two minutes of this round. See that flicking jab of Young's? Come on, punch out, man, you're free, punch. Left cut, look at the way Young goes. Balls down. Crouches over in half. I don't see Young moving the way he did in the earlier rounds. Maybe the strength of Ali. Wait. Left gut in there by Young. Let him go. Come on, man. Punch out. You're free. Come on, punch out. After this pause for station identification, we'll be back. Round eight. Round eight begins. Round eight. And in Ali's corner, they're exhorting him to do more. Who knows? Maybe he's trying quickly there. Couple of rights. Come on, Come on. All right, Ali. Come on. Let's clean break, man. Come on. All right, Jimmy. Let's go now. Watch the arm. Tom Kelly, an active referee, controlling the bout. Good position, quick instructions. All right, come on, let him go. Let the arms go. Come on, men, punch out. Come on, let the arms go. Come on, that's it. Referee Mike for this occasion. Keep him up, Jimmy. You don't see those arms. blows landing of our leads. Often is timing, the arms without snap, the punches apparently no snap. Jimmy Young with only 23 fights behind him, 17 victories, 4 defeats, 2 draws. Trained as a Philadelphia fighter, trains in Joe Frazier's gymnasium. Philadelphia fighters, boxers, counter punchers. Well, he wanted to get the right in there. Young's left was up and watered it off. Look at Young. He's got a right, right into the Ali chest. He is growing and growing in confidence. Ali got a flicking jab in there. Young is fighting well. Oh, that left moved him back for a moment. Young coming in with a right. Come on, man. Let's go. Clean break. Come on, On the side of the neck. Let's go, man. Countdown in round eight. How many of you ever heard of Jimmy Young? How many of you thought the fight would go this far? Look at that. All right, watch your arms. Come on. Ali trying in a, a sense a double right lead and missing. Young in there with the right. Young dancing, moving around. Ali flat footed. Coming to the end of round eight. There is quiet in the right, champion's right. corner. See the way Young again curls up on the ropes. Ali is having all kinds of trouble reaching this kid, penetrating. Young moving away. The young man, he's far from used up. The end of the round upon us. Carol, go to your corners. We're underway in round nine. 
putting this fight in perspective thus far, Ali has tried to become the aggressor in the recent three or four rounds. Young has been effective defensive. It is unofficially at ringside scored up to this point a close fight. However, Young has surprised everybody, and Ali has not fought compelling. Whether it's look at Young, Ali after him, and the kid curls up again. Remember, Jimmy Young is rated number three in Ring Magazine. There are various rating systems, but Ring is the most respected. Protect yourself, Jim. Got to number three on the basis of his victory over Lyle. Unanimous decision. Lyle couldn't get to him either. And on the basis of his knockout of Richard Dunn. Look at that. Two quick jabs landed by Jimmy Young. He's dancing. Ali is now dancing. Ali on his toes. Ali has the edge in reach, and yet Young is getting to him occasionally with those jabs. Ali dancing. It's the ninth round. Stick it as corner keeps yelling. Look at Jimmy Young challenging Ali. Go dance, he says to him in net effect. Confidence that we saw before the fight was real, not imagined. I told you he's a counterpunch. After each Ali, Ali blow, you see him try to counter. Look at Ali. The kid's dancing away from him. Steadily. Interesting, isn't it? Now the fight, you saw that counterpunch right by Young. That's a counterpunch. Coming down to the end of round nine. Ali gets a left in. 49 seconds, 48, counting down. Will not break for a commercial at the end of this round. We'll show you that earliest sequence. This is the most interesting round of all because Ali is dancing in the old style. Trying to get to Young, no question about it, unable to do so. Young fighting clever, effective defensively, and good counterpunch. There he took the lead with two less. Almost the end of round nine. Getting in with those flicking lefts near the end of the round. Let's follow Jimmy Young, his arms upraised. The crowd loving, loving him at the moment. They don't care what's going on in there, whether it's Ali out of shape or Young's effectiveness. Let's look at that earlier sequence in round nine again. Ali bouncing, dancing. Young with the counter punch right over the left, attemptedly delivered by Ali. Young into the midriff. Ali the one holding there, not hurt. Let's be clear about that. Young has not shown any evidence of power to him. What he's shown is clever tactics. Good fight plan. And the ability to carry it out. Ali not sitting between rounds. Seconds out, clear the ring, clear the ring, seconds. We await the start of round 10. The crowd has suddenly come alive. They knew Ali was trying very hard last round to get to Young. Ali quickly on his toes again, dancing, where with an overhead shot. Don't forget tomorrow, the Kentucky Derby, live right here on ABC, America's greatest thoroughbred race. And what a sports spectacle it is. Ali moving now steadily, dancing around. Left missed. Angelo Dundee in your lower right hand corner looking on. Jimmy Young with a half smile on his face. Drew Brown Bundini yelling away, stick him, champ. Oh, I've never seen Ali miss I so many laps in a given three, fight in my life. Even the time Norton shattered his jaw, Ali got in some laps with consistency. 
see that counterpunch? When Ali throws that left, back comes Jimmy Young. That left got to Jimmy. Tenth round action. Yes, we're in the tenth round if you joined us late. And Jimmy Young got into the right there, and Jimmy Young is fighting well. Has been from go. the beginning. Pity on, pat, pity out. pat to the midriff. Jimmy out. Young doing on, the pity go, pat. Let the next go. Come on, man. Let's go. Ali, last round in this round. Circling steadily to the left on his toes, occasionally switching back to the right. The old Ali style for the three and a half years away from the ring. That attempted counterpunch missed. Jimmy tried to lead with two lefts, both missed. Ali has not gotten a really sharp blow into Young. I don't believe in this entire fight. I wonder what Kenny Norton is thinking. If Ali should lose, as a matter of fact, Kenny was supposed to join me at ringside within the last round or two. His manager won't let him. Too much at stake because of Ali should... That's the end of the round. The 11th round is underway. I was making the point as the last round ended that Norton's manager now doesn't want Kenny to join us. He's worried about this fight, worried that Ali could use the decision and Norton's big shot for the big money would go out the window for a decent time at least. More time lost for Kenny Norton, so he doesn't want Kenny here. Fight goes on. Round 11. They're yelling at Ali from Ali's corner that it's round 11. As if Ali could turn it on at any time. So far, there's been no evidence that he can. No evidence that Jimmy Young, who got a light right then from Ali, bounced off the ropes, had a half smile on his face. His concentration supreme. Watch the arm, Jimmy Watch the arm. Young. Try it. Come on, let's go. Come he on, has stuck to on. his let's battle go. plan all the way. Tom Kelly right in there, get the blows up. Good right! A good right lead by Ali. That's probably his best blow in the fight. All right, man, hold it. Come on, watch the push. Come on, come on, watch the push. Come on. He's tired, Ali. He's tired. Ali's corner is yelling that Young is tired. We'll see. Both fighters miss. Young with a couple of left hands. Let him go, man. Come on, come on. Let the arms go. Come on, let him go. Benjamin close there yelling to Ali from his corner. Look at Dundee in the lower right corner of your screen. Ali isn't able to catch him in close, or hasn't been able to all night. This kid's defenses have been excellent. See that miss? Kid slipped the punch with the movement of his head. Does that very well. Has been doing it all night. Rahman Ali just yelled over from the corner as he did in the Ron Lyle fight. You're looking at, you're losing, Muhammad. You're losing. He did that in the Lyle fight in the 11th round, and this is the 11th round, and it was then that Ali did away with Lyle, and that disputed ended. But I don't know about this youngster, Jimmy Young. All of Ali's plans, a busy year. The end of the round. The crowd now booing Ali. 
where Overally and his gun. Still not on a stool, leaning over the ropes. He's tired. There's people exhorting him on. Here comes Kenny Norton now. We're getting Kenny Norton in here with us. All right, Kenny Norton is with me now. He's getting a mic on. You see him right next to me. Kenny, what do you make of this thing so far? Well, I think so far it's just a matter of Ollie being out of shape and Young being in shape. Uh-huh. You give the edge to Young so far? I wouldn't say the edge. I would say that... Uh, close fight. He's very close fight. He's getting more confidence as long as the fight goes. Okay. Kenny Norton will be sitting next to us for the rest of this bout. Round 12 under White. This fight means a lot to Kenny Norton, quite frankly, as I've explained. He wants Ali to win. It's a big money thing for Kenny Norton in the future, whereas there would be a further wait if Ali were to lose. General scoring at ringside has the fight very close, with everybody surprised at Young's performance and in a way equally surprised by Ali's performance. Let the arms go, come on, men. Let the arms go, come on. Punch out, Ali, come on. Punch out, let him go, Jimmy. Let the arms go, come on. Let the neck go, Jim. Are you astonished to see Ali look like this, Kenny? Oh, yes, I am. He doesn't have his on, fast out. hands, the clothes, no not countering, nothing. Sluggish. And Young's a very good counter punch. Remember he talked earlier and I said he had right. a good counter with a jab? He's doing that counter. Kind of doing it very effectively. We've commented on it. Have you the... ever seen Ali miss so often? No, I haven't. The longer the fight goes, the more confidence Young gets. Those of you joining us late, this is round 12. Muhammad Ali against Jimmy Young for the heavyweight championship of the world. As Kenny Norton sitting next to me has just confirmed, I've been talking about it all night, Ali is sluggish, out of shape, has been missing constantly. The swiftness of hands doesn't seem to be there. No snap in the punches. Jimmy Young in superb shape with a good battle plan, excellent defenses, and effective counter punching. So the fight is very close indeed. Very close. How do you have it scored up till now, Kenny, in your own mind? Well, I'd have to say the fight is a very close fight. Uh, I still think Ali has the edge because of his number one, he's a champion, and his superiority. He, he, he looks, he's, he's, you can see he's the better fighter. Young's gaining more confidence, he's carrying punches, so he's not far behind. And a good quick flurry, a good rally could pull it out for him. Ali trying man, landing with the left. Young quickly moving back. Young has used the ropes effectively tonight. Look at him cover, Ali can't get through. Ali trying to overpower him now. Howard, he's trying to overpower him, but there's nothing in Ali's punches. Nothing at all, Ken. I couldn't agree with you more. No snap to those punches. I'll the world with you. You can't be 34 and balloon up and not train, and it's become harder and harder for Ali to train. His heart has gone out of him. He's been fighting for the money only. You can understand him doing that, no quarrel with that, but you've got in this business, and nobody knows it, but than Ali, to train, to be ready for any opponent. The countdown continues for round 12. Howard, it couldn't be for the money only because he and Frazier had one heck of a fight. At what, that was Frazier against the end of the round. We'll talk more, Ken. Kenny, we're going to slow-mo that flurry by Ali. Then I want to talk to you about that. Ali would kill himself training for you, for Joe Frazier. There's that flurry. Let's look at it again. It happened right above us in Ali's corner. Young against the ropes. And Ali now trying to overpower him, but without the old snap to the punches and without the timing. Look at that miss. Then the left got in there. Timing is completely gone, Kenny. Well, it just shows that if you can't you know fight a man like this, he has good eyes and not train. That's right. It's, it's very obvious he didn't train very hard for this fight. Overconfidence again. But I made the point early on for you, for Foreman, for Frazier. That's the mistake he made tonight, not training. That's he awesome. underrated this kid. This kid's a Philadelphia fighter. That's very true. Uh, Ron Lyle also underestimated uh, this young man. It's 
right. That's what happened to Ron Lyle, and that's why Young beat him up. What is this kind of tactic? I never saw it. The fighter tried to use the ropes that way by going halfway through. He wasn't knocked through, Kenny. That's the first time I've seen that, Howard. I can't answer that one for you. Look at make... this. See, but he's, all, he's, all, he's winning the crowd over by doing this. Mm -hmm. He's winning the crowd over by doing this. Because you can't hit the man once he's through the rope. Not, that's not going to score points for Thirteenth round action. A weird scene. Price. Young has put himself between the ropes in this round. Twice. Watch a pushing. Ali desperately trying to overpower the younger man now. We've got a minute 50 seconds left in the round. Round 13. Do you think now that Young is getting a little tired from the superior weight and strength of Ali? That's very true. Ali has used his weight on the man's back a few times. But then again, Young is also gaining more confidence. Ali is expending his energy, and Young knows this. Now you see Young dancing back on his toes. Young has slipped punches with his head very effectively tonight, Kenny. That's very true. Uh, Young and I worked together for the second Ali fight, and he's a very, he has a very good eye and very quick hands. He's very determined now to get him more confidence the longer the fight goes. You just saw the graphic, the run for the roses. 100 second time around tomorrow on ABC. In the home of the twin spires, Churchill Downs. This is 13th round action, believe it or not. Fight goes on. Let him go. You know, if we weren't up to the 13th round with a close fight like this, you would have been reading Ali was doing this for right talent. Go, man. Come on, I read that fight. in a couple of columns this morning. That he was going to tease the lad for television. It's not for television now, it's for Ali's title, I'll tell you. You agree, Kenny? Yes, I do, Howard. But then again, remember you were talking to me earlier about the people I was fighting, like the Ron Sanders? That's right. What can you say about this? You can, you can Ali, Ali really underestimated this young man. You saw him counter punch with a flurry, a combination. You just proved you can never underestimate someone. That's right. The end of round 13. Now the crowd is really getting excited. They sense a repeat of San Diego. March 31, 1973. Hold it, hold it, Howard. Hold it, hold it now. Now wait. <laughs> That's when you surprised us all. I underrated you, Ali underrated you, the whole world underrated you. You proved to be some kind of pro fighter. Let's look at this replay. Young, backing off. Take it from there, Kenny. Okay, as you can see here, Ali is stalking him, but then again, it, he has nothing in his punches. You know, he's, he's flicking them out. He might be landing, but nothing's happening. And Young, you know, nothing's there at all. Missing, see that? Missing. Timing, timing's way off. Oh, totally. Young has a very good eye. Plus Look at that. Those counter punches. The left and the right combination scored. Timing's definitely off. It comes from not boxing and not working. Right. It's telling it like it is, Ken Norton. Round 14. I think that Young's going to come on stronger the last two rounds because he knows that he can, he can burn Ali out. All right, watch your arms. Come on, punch up. You know how many months this could cost you if Young gets the decision, Kenny? How many months and how much money? Exactly. <laughs> and the title. All right, hold it, hold it. All right, let's go. Ali, Ali come plunging on, after. Ali desperately trying to be the aggressor in the later rounds of the fight. Ali's trying to throw the big punch punch heavy punches. He's not a heavy puncher. Go. Young's slipping and trying to counter back on him. And he's making Ali lunge. He's not used to lunging. Ali is a pinpoint puncher. That's correct. <laughs> the only thing bad about this is Young doesn't have the power to hurt Ali. He can box with him, but he can't he hurt him. He's not a puncher. 
Only five knockouts in the 17 victories. Talking next to me, of course, is Kenny Norton, the number one rated contender. The man who expected Ali to win easily tonight. And then he, Norton, would get his chance after the proposed affair in Germany next month and then the thing with the wrestler the following month. Ali's plan so carefully laid. His last year of fighting it was supposed to be. We are not saying he has lost this fight. I agree with Kenny Norton. It's a close fight. I've said that all night. It's a hard thing to take a man's title away. You saw that kind of right. punch right. right. That's the jab. what Young has been doing so effectively all night. An excellent counter punch. And I feel that if Young lasts this round, which I think he's going to do, that the next round he's going to try to open up the flurry. Let the next go, man. Come on, let the next go. Rockman Ali, Drew Brown Bundini, Angie Dundee, Ferdy Pacheco. Gene Kilroy, all sitting in the corner. Don't know what to say about it. Good right fight again by Jimmy Young. Young landing all over. Young going in front. Young pouring on Muhammad Ali in round 14. That blow missed, but it excited the crowd. Kid is coming on in confidence, in strength. He's not afraid, never was. That's another part of his success tonight. He's definitely a spoiler. Yes, he is. End of the round. The start of round 15, the crowd going wild. The fight is touched gloves. Norton, Kenny Norton next to me. Between rounds was exhausting. Ali right above us. Don't blow my shot, Muhammad. Again, Young uses the tactic of going between the ropes. Dundee desperately yelling at referee Tom Kelly. Ali missing, lunging wild. As Norton said, he's a pinpoint puncher. He is not a lunger. Tonight he's missed left jab after left jab more than I've seen him miss in the entirety of his career. Ali just nodded at Kenny Norton between rounds when Norton said don't blow it. That's very true. I, I, I feel that Ali will come through. He's been known to come through in the last round, especially when guns are down. He now cannot I, score with that left, Kenny. The timing is totally off. That's very true. Right now he has to get the man against the rope to come up with, with the body shots and the flurries. Hodge. Missed with the uppercut. Missed again everything. with two lefts. Right Miss, hand. Missing with everything. Being made to look like no part of the great champion he has been and the great fighter he has been. Fighting against a man without the power to knock him out, to even hurt him. It's the amazing part of it. Jimmy Young, oh, Jimmy, come on, come on, Jimmy. look at that, oh, Kelly yeah. now telling come on, Jimmy, come on. come on, the only thing that can cost Jimmy Young is the frequency of defensive tactics in my mind, Kenny, because I think you made an effective point taking a title away from the man. That's very true, Young, I, I said before, he's got a, he's a good counter puncher, and we were speaking of the Lyle fight, and he counter punched Lyle the whole night, he was doing everything the Lyle didn't expect, and with Ali, Ali's doing the same thing, he's a very determined we're man. We're almost at the end of the fight. 15th round. This decision is going to be very, very interesting. There is confusion at ringside among the experts on their official scores. Every time Ali throws one punch, Young throws back two. That's right. How do you score it now? We're coming to the end of the fight, Ken Norton. Whom would you give the decision to? I refuse to answer under the Fifth Amendment, Howard. I want Ali to win, but then again, Young's fighting a very good fight, very courageous, and can go either way now, I think. But to beat the champion, you have to beat him big and decisive. Ali with a left. Ali trying to come down with a right. Back of Young's head. We're down to seconds now. The fight will have gone the limit. The crowd yells as Jimmy Young gets in a left. We're at the end of the fight. Jimmy Young has not only gone the distance, 
He has fought out some fight. And in just a moment, we'll be getting the decision. The crowd is standing and cheering for Jimmy Young. His trainer, his pair of managers, management partners, Jack Levin and Ray Kelly, are all over. Young thinks he has won this fight. Look at the joy, the elation in his corner. We await the decision. Dundee, a sour face, you can understand it. Bundini, the disappointment apparent. We'll be back with the decision in a moment. Where's... I'm hearing you, where's the hand? All right, we're in the ring. Muhammad Ali is combing his hair. An old familiar scene. In Jimmy Young's corner, there is the general feeling with our handheld camera on him that he will get the decision. If so, a more stunning upset than Kenny Norton over Ali back in 73. If so, the end of all of the immediate plans for Ali to collect all the millions of dollars. But that's if so. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the decision. Here is the decision. Judge Larry Barrett has it 70-68 Ali. That's right. Muhammad Ali. Ali has it 72-65 Ali. Muhammad Ali is still the heavyweight Judge champion Moore of the world. Has it 71-64 Ali. A unanimous decision. I'm standing with Jimmy Young, and he doesn't believe the decision. Now they're mobbing Ali as the crowd boos the decision. Muhammad Ali gets a unanimous decision as the heavyweight champion of the world retains his title here in Landover, Maryland. Now, as you can see, we are in difficult streets. A handhold cameraman trying to get through to him. Get back, please, all of you. Muhammad! Wait, you realize that you did not fight well tonight. I'm not picking on you. Let's be clear. You're right. Were you worried that you had lost the decision? No. I know I won the decision, but I knew it would be close. I um, didn't really train too hard. As you know, I was too heavy. I'm fighting again next month, a uh, fella who is much rougher, but not as fast. Then I'm fighting the Japanese national. First of all, I want to thank Almighty God, Allah, and Isalam Alaikum to all the Muslims and my great leader, the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad. All right. I repeat, you I salam alaikum to my great leader, the Honorable Wallace D. Fine. Muhammad. But you have admitted teacher. you were out of shape. Did you learn a lesson no, tonight? No, I'm not out of shape. I couldn't go 15 rounds out of shape with that young man. I learned a lesson that I played too much in training. I didn't train as hard as I should, but I got by like I wanted to, really. Hey, for him to be close. Hello to my mother. I miss Odessa Clay out there in Louisville, Kentucky. And hello to Dick Gregory, who's out there running to make the people conscious of starving people in the world. He's running from Los Angeles to uh, New York, and I think it's a great man that I am. Okay, I have never seen you so often your timing. I'm Missing old, so Howard. many lefts and I'm rights. I'm getting old. That's why I'm quitting this year. If I can get by this year, I want to thank, say a prayer to everybody to the great Stephen Fetch, who's in Michael Reese Hospital out there in Chicago also. But what about a fighter of the caliber of Kenny Norton who can punch where Jimmy well, Young can? Well, Kenny Norton can. tonight, I probably would have lost. I'll be down to about 200 and about 15 pounds for Norton, 15 pounds lighter than tonight. And this is one reason I didn't work too hard tonight, because I'm preserving energy, energy for people like Norton also. All right. Good luck to you. Congratulations. But it was not one of your great performances. Well, Allah bless me. I salam alaikum to my great leader, Arma Wallace D. Muhammad. Okay. Good luck to you, champ. Now we're going to try to get Jimmy Young, a young man who thought that he had won the fight. Is Jimmy Young still in the ring? No, apparently he has left the ring. Ali is about to leave the ring, and the crowd is not greeting him the way they greeted him when he first came into this ring tonight. But he won an unanimous decision. And he had to have done it on what the referee and the judges considered aggressiveness. He did admit in the post-fight conversation that he wasn't in good shape. And then he tried to recant on that. 230 pounds. 
That's an awful lot of weight for him, and also 34 years of age. The mist blows. The happiest man hereabouts is Kenny Norton. He is the happiest man. Tonight's telecast was produced in association with Don King Productions. Travel arrangements made through. Promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United with wide body 747s to Hawaii. More people fly the friendly skies to Hawaii than any other airline. Once again, the world heavyweight champion is Muhammad Ali, winner on an unanimous decision. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.